month, ladies and gentlemen, our county exec elect, Steve Newhouse. I guess I have to stay here just so I get on this video here, John, or can I be animated and walk around? You can, well, you uh, can only walk around. All right, I'll, I'll stay here. Strength. Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, it's, it's really an honor to be here, and uh, it, it's great uh, to have the feeling of not campaigning anymore and actually getting to work. Uh, so uh, it, it's a wonderful uh, time to be here. John mentioned uh, the city of Newburgh. And I have to mention Harry Poor, uh, who gave me my first job out of college, uh, was a city manager. He also uh, cultivated uh, Steve Gross, who we're going to be talking about in a little bit as well. And Harry, one of my first assignments of working for a city manager's office was to attend the Chamber of Commerce uh, breakfast meetings. And I have to say, it has made me, I believe, the best candidate, and I think very qualified to be county executive. And I'll tell you why. Every month that we have speakers and every time we network, you learn a little bit more about this community and some of the challenges it faces. And I remember in the springtime, we were at the uh, Fountains in Walk Hill, and the United Way uh, threw out some stats about one out of four kids go to bed uh, hungry every night in Orange County. These are staggering numbers, and these are some of the things that I'm going to attack uh, uh, as county executive with DSS, the social service, being one of my biggest um, budget line items and costs. Uh, and there's <laughs> mandates coming out from the state and so on and so forth. Another thing just mentioned um, was my good friend Jim DiStefano, and uh, we talked about suicide prevention. In the last few weeks since the election, I've met with every county executive in Hudson Valley, uh, our neighboring county executives, as well as uh, Ed Diana. Eddie has been great with me. Um, we're going to talk about Lou Heimbach, the chairman of my transition team, two great guys that have been uh, rolling out the red carpet for me and, and uh, our incoming staff, uh, so we have a very smooth transition. Uh, but in about in January, and I hope the media doesn't cover this too much because Mike Hine will kill me. Uh, but uh, Mike Hine is really, uh, Ulster County developed a really good um, awareness program for suicide prevention for, for parents, for kids uh, that have friends that are, that are having problems. And I would love to tie that in with you, Jim. Uh, so this is another benefit of what the Chamber has. Uh, one other quick thing about the Chamber. I was talking to my friend Josh yesterday while we were up uh, on a thing. Uh, the chamber doesn't get money from the county. I, since I've been town supervisor in Chester, we've always paid. Uh, and I know Wayne Booth's here, we, the town pays. So I want to definitely make sure that the government is supporting this organization uh, as it should be. I'm not trying to spend the taxpayers' money wastefully, but we are a business. It's a multi-million dollar corporation, so we should be contributing just like everybody else in this room. Um, you know, we were arguing yesterday, Eddie and John and I, uh, uh, because we heard this thing was going to be sold out today, and we were all trying to take credit for, uh, for, <laughs> for, for, for who's the one that's a draw. And uh, of course, we see Santa Claus there. And, uh, <laughs> so thanks, Santa. He asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I told him that we need about $10 million, uh, to, uh, not for me, but for the county. Uh, we do have some challenges in front of us with the county. and. Uh, you know, the centerpiece, you know, I'm out of political mode, uh, so we're getting into work mode. The centerpiece of my campaign, and I think everybody in this room gets this, is economic development. So uh, I've met with the leaders in economic development around our region and around this county. Uh, Maureen Hallahan, uh, Bob Armistead, Maureen from the partnership, Bob from the IDA. Of course, John D'Ambrosio, we spend a lot of time together, have a tremendous amount of respect for him and his organization. And we're excited to roll out a couple programs coming out in the future. The Orange County Business Development Corporation is one of those tools that we would like to reinvigorate, uh, losing my uh, speech here. Uh, this is a tool that we can use to uh, stimulate small business growth. So these are the things we're talking about. I'm excited to uh, get to work on that with them. Uh, a couple pieces of advice, one from Rudy Giuliani and one from John D'Ambrosio, is, is uh, to uh, under-promise and over-deliver. Uh, and I, I get that and I believe in it. but. In this economy, I really uh, can't do anything but to overpromise. We, I can't have any of these caveats that we're going to roll out here fail, because things are tough. And I'm going to bring back something from this weekend, and I, I bring, the, I speak about this every day since last weekend. Uh, I, one thing uh, that we didn't talk about is uh, I'm still, I'm still an officer in the military, and uh, last Saturday, and I'm John, uh, Jim, I apologize, I missed your occupations dinner, but I was. Uh, crisscrossing the state with the Toys for Tots. I was the officer in charge of um, a train that left uh, from Binghamton and went to Colville Skill, Neonta, and so on and so forth. And it was filled with Marines, airmen, uh, uh, sailors. And uh, 
we stopped at these places, and the kids and the parents wanted blankets and jackets more than toys. I mean, I haven't seen poverty like that. I mean, I've been all over the world with the military, but I mean, that is staggering, and, and that's sad. Um, a year ago, I bring that up because a year ago, in Orange County, we had the Toys for Tots train, and it rolled through Warwick, Chester, so on and so forth. And what we do in Orange County is we give toys to the Marines to give to poor people. And now I know a lot of kids in Orange County need, and families need things, but it's a little bit of a difference. I'm upstate on Saturday, and we're giving clothing out to poor kids, and we're giving toys out to poor kids. In Orange County, which they did this past Saturday, our people were giving toys to the Marines to give to other kids. So uh, we are doing a little bit better. We all have challenges, but uh, as we now go into the holiday season full bore, uh, I ask everybody to be conscious of that because a lot of nonprofits in this room, a lot of people suffering out there in Orange County. Uh, so I, I want you to keep that in the back of your head to do what you can, uh, we all are, to try to help our brothers and sisters and our neighbors around here. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, this year, uh, Eddie Diana and Jim Burpo uh, rolled out uh, a program with the Chamber of Commerce to uh, try to do business with Orange County, and I think that's gotten a great start, and it's a wonderful initiative. I want to continue to grow on that. So uh, what John and I talked about earlier this week, John D'Ambrosio, is any type of commentary, anything we can do to build up on that, give your comments to the Chamber. We ha you have an intergovernmental relations committee. We're going to utilize that uh, to build up on that as well. Uh, last night in Chester was my last town board meeting. It was kind of, uh, it, it, was, it was bittersweet because I love being supervisor. But we were looking at bids to do some HVAC work um, in, in town hall. And the three bidders all were not from Orange County. Uh, with this economy, I can't believe that there's not other companies. So the word is not getting out there. So I think the towns are going to have to maybe piggyback with, with under Jim Burpo's leadership. Um, but we have to be able to do something better to make sure the people in this room have an opportunity to bid on projects in Orange County. Uh, so, so that's another initiative we're going to do. Um, we, we are kind of short on time, so I wanted to roll out some important people here today. Uh, I'm going to bring in my administration. We're going to start January 1st. And I want to uh, also have my uh, single out a couple of my running mates, Dave Hoover and Andy Rabbit, and I'm going to ask them to come up in a moment as well. Uh, but without uh, a good team behind you, you're not going to be able to be successful. And I know I'm going into a totally different role. I'm not writing my own press releases. I'm not driving, you know, myself all over the place. I'm working with many different department heads. So I'm, I'm proud to announce today uh, that I'm going to put forth Wayne Booth, the supervisor of Newburgh, not Montgomery. I know John said that, uh, as, as my, uh, my deputy county executive on January 1st. So Wayne Booth, stand up. Wayne Booth is a Marine. I'm a Navy officer, so we have that in, uh, internal relationship anyway of, of the services. And uh, I have a lot of respect for him. He's a good guy, and um, you know I'm proud to have him on board. Uh, the other person uh, I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Steve Gross. Uh, Steve Gross and I have known each other since the Harry Poor days. I took his job in Harry Poor's office in Newburgh when he went to work for Joe Rampy. And uh, Steve Gross has been very... Um, uh, vital and, and important with this transition right now. He's actually our point person on everything. He's, I think that my other two running mates, they're, they're uh, their point person as well. And Steve will be in the uh, inner circle working with us as well. Uh, so Steve, just please stand up so people know. Uh, when I started this campaign, uh, we were looking for somebody to hire to to be the executive director to run the, uh, the, the office and so on and so forth. And uh, my team had picked some different people that we wanted to look at and uh, my wife came home and said, I met this lady, you're hiring her, she's running your day-to-day uh, -day operations. <laughs> so, uh, and everybody knows as a good husband, do you do what your wife tells you to do? <laughs> so uh, I'd like to uh, announce Alicia D'Amico. Alicia, please stand up. She will be... Alicia will be my chief of staff, and she will be the gatekeeper, as you see in all these different other uh, um, apparatus and government agencies. She will be the person that you will be seeing. We will be regulars at this, at this breakfast and, and the events, and we're going to be at the Chamber Ball. Um, but without that, I also want to mention a couple of my, my running mates. And uh, 
Dave and Annie, would you guys like to please come up quick? Because we are going to be the people that work for you. When you talk about uh, see something, say something, we're going to bring up Carl DeVoice in, in a minute as well. These are going to be your four top elected officials that are going to be working for you, helping you be successful. So with that, I'm going to just turn it over to Dave Hoover real quick so he can just talk about some of his decisions and what he's doing. Um, thank you, Steve, um, very much for giving me an opportunity to speak here. I just uh, was thinking as there was, everybody was talking, um, I don't think in the state there's very many programs, if any, like the Orange Advantage, but I just want to tell you, I'll bet you I'm one of the only district attorneys in the state <laughs> that actually carries the card. <laughs> um, and I've actually thank used you. it. And I've actually used it. Um, on January 1st, the district attorney's office has taken a new step in a, in a very new direction. It has always been very efficient in the prosecution of crime. On January 1st, it's going to be taking a step toward what we call community prosecution in partnering with our community leaders, with our not-for-profits, and with our schools to promote crime prevention um, and crime awareness so that in addition to taking a prosecutorial role, we are looking at trying to prevent crime and solve problems in your community because I believe that's important. Um, today, I have with me two people that will be joining my staff on January uh, 1st. I'd like to announce first, Christopher Boric is going to be the chief assistant in my office. He is a former uh, <clears throat> assistant attorney general, a former Manhattan district attorney, as well as an Orange County district attorney. He brings well over a decade and a half of experience to the position. I believe he's one of the most qualified people in the Hudson Valley to hold that. Chris, could you please stand? The uh, second individual I'm going to announce today has been a personal friend of mine um, over the last 12 years. I had the opportunity when he was with the New York State Police. Uh, he was one of the first people instrumental in starting a gang task force in Orange County and leading successful prosecutions with it. He uh, since has retired from the New York State Police at the rank of senior investigator. Um, but most importantly, he has a resume that's second to none when it comes to law enforcement. And one of the most important things that I found when I sat with him and I talked with him over the years, we found that there has to be diversity in the district attorney's office and there has to be diversity in our law enforcement. So today I announce Wilfredo Garcia will be my chief criminal investigator, the first Latino American to hold that position ever in Orange County. Will. <laughs> Lastly, you will see me at many of these breakfasts, and my door is always open, so feel free to call. Thank you. pleasure to be here as your assemblywoman for the last 10 years, which really has been an honor. And now this new role in my life as county elect, county clerk, it's been really a great ride this campaign. I campaigned with two men who understand what it means to be a team. And running a county needs to be a team. We are the faces to many of you in this room, but we represent you all. And you know, when we talk about putting our number twos and number threes in place, it's very important because if we're not here, there are people who will represent us. And I'm very proud to stand here with my number twos. I have two. How, how lucky am I? <laughs> uh, Marie and Kelly, can you both stand, please? Marie Steets has been my chief of staff for the last nine years. And truly, it has been an honor to work with Marie. She has more passion for people. And we know in our business, people are everything. The skills to work with people. So Marie, thank you for joining my team. to Kelly Eskew, who is the town clerk to Crawford, who truly, again, has represented the people with the heart and soul. And it is my honor to call you my deputy. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> I'm really brief. Uh, Steve, Dave, and I, from day one, have already started our teams working. We've been meeting with staff. We're ready to go. We're all going to be sworn in on the first, and on the second, we're all talking who's going to be to work first. And you know what? It's probably going to be Steve. <laughs> you know, Dave, Steve, and I called ourselves Team Orange, and we're really proud of being the Team Orange in the future here in Barnard County. 
So God bless you all and enjoy the holidays. Thank you. I, I, I'm checking the clock, so I have a couple minutes, and there's one important thing that's happening today, and I know Eddie, Diana's going to appreciate this, and I've talked to Steve Gross and Wayne and, and our, our staff. Um, for the last couple of years, we know the paralysis that's consumed Goshen, the county building, no decisions being made. Um, we are at the cusp of, of making a decision. The legislature has uh, two proposals in front of them today, and I want to just mention them because there was some controversy. I know Lynn uh, Sion from the Chamber of Commerce in Goshen was here, and um, Last week, uh, the plans were rolled out, and they didn't include a DMV in Goshen. Um, Annie and I are committed to bringing that DMV to Goshen. Um, and, and, and that'll happen. And I don't want to, you know, I got the mayor. I don't think Kyle Rod is here, but a lot of the elected officials of Goshen said, this is BS, let's have a press conference. If we started that fight again and derailed this now final step, it, it's just not pro, uh, progressive. It's not the right thing to do for Orange County. So what I would ask you, and I know i got a lot of my good friends here, like Joe DiStefano and, and, and Lou Heimbach, people that are on my transition committee, but there's a lot of people that from the business community and elected officials in the room. Talk to your legislators and ask them to make a decision today. I'm not trying to give them a hard time, but let's just move forward on this and take one thing off the table that we can then focus on. Every, every distraction that I have, every distraction that all these departments have, um, takes away from time to create jobs, to help the economy, to answer your phone calls, to address your concerns. So uh, if I ask for one thing from you today, I, I, I spoke earlier about helping your brothers and sisters and your neighbors. Call up your legislators and say, I know you got a meeting this afternoon. Make a decision. Let's get this going in, in Goshen. Let's make a decision and move forward. So again, I wish everybody a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, the whole bit. Look forward to working with you, and I will be a regular here. My door will be open. We, uh, one last thing uh, that's an important to mention is the county executive office is moving out of the 911 center. Uh, on January 1st or in and around there, we will be in 40 Matthew Street, right across from the partnership. Uh, and uh, uh, I, Bob Armistead said he's going to visit, visit us on a regular basis. So we can truly have one-stop shopping. You can see Maureen in the partnership. You can see the IDA myself, and that I think will help business development. So January 1st, we're getting sworn in, 12 noon at Orange County Community College in Middletown. Everybody's welcome to attend. The invitations will be out shortly. Um, but we will be working out of 40 Matthew Street, and we look forward to seeing you. So God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I can speak for all, uh, all of us saying that we're going to really look forward to working with you uh, as, as we progress over the next four years to make Orange County even uh, better. Um, because at the end of the day, it's all about jobs. And when you speak about all about jobs, we, talk, we can talk about Orange County's biggest cheerleader, and I really mean that. And I mean that in a very respectful way. Um, Eddie Diana, um, our role with the chamber goes back to a time when Newberg wanted the jail in the courthouse and Eddie was in the legislature and was the uh, swing boat. And um, our, um, our relationship with him has done nothing but grow since that day. Uh, he has been a phenomenal county executive and at the end of the day, he understands Everything starts with a job. Ladies and gentlemen, our current county executive, Ed Diana. Or any of that stuff. Yeah, we don't, yeah. we don't want him to get any germs. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving after this meeting to go to New York to see my uh, medical doctor, Dr. Dove. And I, I can't tell I was here today because it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I just got to thank everybody in this room. You know, um, you do get it. Uh, it's all about jobs. There's absolutely no question. Because people are out there today, and like Steve said, Steve, I want to wish you the very best as the next county executive. Um, you will do a wonderful job. 
You've surrounded yourself with some great staff already. Uh, at least, I don't know where she went, she was sitting here. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to have her as your office manager and running that whole inner circle of that office. And certainly Wayne Booth, good friend of mine for many years, a very capable individual. So Wayne, thank you for taking on that role. It's a very critical role, I can tell you that, because really you will probably run the day-to-day -day operation of Orange County government. And there's an awful lot that you'll have to do, I can tell you that. And I know Stephen is going to be somewhere in that administration, and he is wonderful. Um, he was the first person 13 years ago, I guess. I went to him and said, Stephen, I want you on board. You're going to get hired if I'm successful. I'm going to be successful. We're going to win this race. Don't worry about it. And we had a great bond since then. And I knew Stephen before that with his Newburgh days and all. I knew how capable he was. Um, so he's been wonderful. Uh, the one mistake I probably made is not making him deputy county exec earlier on in the career. Um, but I wanted to make sure I uh, protected him with a job that was for her. Because so, I knew my job could end. I said, this way I wanted to protect him so he has a job for life. So I said, uh, go to HR, trust me. Uh, so, so we made that happen. But you know, also in the room, you have three county executives. You have Mr. Heinbeck, I think is just a tremendous individual, a mentor of mine, a friend of mine for over 30 years. So, Lou, I'm glad you're in the room. You're always in the room. And you're always a force in the room. I can tell you that. And Stephen-elect, uh, you're going to be a great county executive. You do get it. We've known each other 20, 25 years as your young Republican days and from there. Um, and you really get it as well, because you know it's all about economic development. It really is. And certainly, I'm in the room, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> so that's been great. But I tell you, um, you know, Dr. John, we've been friends I don't know how long now. And yes, uh, you make a lot of decisions easy and hard. And I said the one thing I'm going to do when I took this job is I'm going to make the easy ones, but I'm going to have to make the hard ones. And sometimes that hurts your career, sometimes it doesn't, but that's fine. And I know the last two decisions of mine are right. The Valley View has to be sold. It has to be sold. The legislature, I don't know what to say. I have 21 people to deal with. The last couple of years has not been fun. Uh, prior to that, every day was fun. But that's okay. They have their opinions, I have mine. I have opinions as well as facts. And I have numbers, and I have all the counties in the state of New York. All I can tell you is this. We had 62 county homes at one time in the state of New York. We're now under 20. But there are 675 private or non-for-profit nursing homes just in the state of New York. So is a 675 wrong and we're right? I don't think so. And NYSAC will tell you that. One of the biggest honors I've ever had is being the president of NYSAC. So I was in all the counties in the state of New York. We went to board meetings talking about different issues. And nursing homes were always the number one issue we were talking about at every meeting. And not for one year, two years, five years, 10 years we've been talking about this. And I went to the legislature 10 years ago and said, we have to look at Valley View then, because we can't sustain this any longer. No action. In 05, no action. I wrote him a letter. In 09, no action. No action. And today, going into 14, still no action. I can tell you this. Our surpluses at one point were $65 million. They're now $9 million. So you tell me, one institution in this county is not going to bankrupt you? That's nonsense. And I've always said, the hard decisions or the easy decisions don't matter. It's making decisions, because people will tell you. I may not agree with you, but I understand why you're doing it. And I've elected you to represent us, all 375,000 people in this county, the greatest county in the state of New York. I said we are still one of the fastest growing counties. And I've always said, people come here because they like to come here. If they didn't like it here, they wouldn't come here. Who would? You've got to be a fool to do that. So that's why we're in the greatest county. We have to sell value. So if you can do anything else today, call legislators and tell them to sell value. View. And you didn't sell it fast enough, because now we're down to nine million. And just so Stephen knows, and Stephen does know, we've talked many times. Next year, to do his 15 budget, he needs $40 million. 40 million. You're down to nine. At the end of the year, we're going to put another 20 back. So he'll have 30, but he's 10 million short. 10 million short the day he walks in office. That's a catastrophe. 
That's not real. That's unreal. That 21 legislators made that happen. Nobody else. I would have thrown every one of them out of office. How's that? <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> Whatever it is. Hey, I'm leaving. I can say a lot. <laughs> And I also have to say, Steve does have a great team. <laughs> Sheriff Du Bois, Annie Rabbit, and David Hoogler, I wish you the very best. If you ever need to call me, I will. I'll answer you, talk to you. Um, but you don't need me. You get it. You get it as well. And my outgoing colleagues, Donna Benson and Frank Phillips and Chairman Pilmar, they're all leaving. And I'm leaving. And that's fine. It's a new regime. It's a new time.